Hi, my name's Sarah Matthews, and I'm one of the librarians who work behind the reference desk. Every week, you ask us all kinds of weird and wonderful questions. So with your permission, we thought we'd share some of the best ones with you and give you an insight into some of our answers. The question I'm going to talk about today presented as something of a tall story to begin with, but as we all know, sometimes fact can be stranger than fiction. I'll read it to you. Hi, in 1953, I placed a Sea Fury aircraft on the steps of the State Library. Do you have any information about this? It's not every day you see a Sea Fury military bomber parked outside the library. But this was exactly the site that greeted Victorians when they came to visit the library in 1953. The aircraft was mounted in the forecourt by personnel from the Royal Australian Navy after they hauled it through the streets from their naval headquarters in St Kilda Road. The plane was on display as part of a wider exhibition to celebrate 50 years of aviation. The exhibition was called the Jubilee of Flight and it was held at the Museum of Applied Science, which was co-located with the library at the time. The Science Museum was first established at the library back in 1870 under the rather stuffy title of the Industrial and Technological Museum. It's amazing to think how far it has come, from the displays in glass cases you can see in this photo to the interactive exhibitions of science works today. The exhibition ran for two months. It showcased the 50 years of aviation that had passed since the Wright brothers first took to the sky in a powered aircraft in 1903. It was a remarkable achievement for two brothers who ran a bicycle repair shop, for not only did they fly the aircraft that day, they'd also invented and designed it themselves. And you can see some of the model aircraft that were on display in Palmer Hall here. By the time the exhibition closed in 1954, over 40,000 people had come to marvel at the Sea Fury in the forecourt. Aside from the spectacle of the aircraft itself, one of the wonderful aspects of these photos are the details you can find in the background. The art gallery also shared the library building with the museum at the time, and you can see the sign above the plane on the left. The statue on the left also caught my eye. Known simply as Wipers, it was created as a tribute to English and Australian soldiers in World War I. Its strange name came from the way the soldiers pronounced the battlefield Ipru on the Western Front. This statue had a companion piece called the driver that stood on the south lawn. And you can see a picture of the driver here in 1938. That's the nurse's home of the Queen Victoria Hospital you can see in the background. Both statues lived outside the library for 50 years before finally being relocated to the shrine in 1998. This is a great photo taken from the library steps looking down towards Swanston Street. You can see in the background the Travellers Hotel and numerous shop fronts, including the Collins Book Depot on the left, where we are now more accustomed to seeing Melbourne Central. Across the road on La Trobe Street, you can see the Bellcraft Knitting Mills on the corner. There's a service station underneath. In this photo, you can see the Singer Sewing Machine Company's building, where RMIT is now located. Finding these images is simple, if you know where to look. We found many of these images on the National Library of Australia's web search engine Trove. If you're not familiar with Trove, then you're in for a treat, because Trove really is a treasure trove of historic newspaper images and articles. The vast majority of them are out of copyright, which is great, because it means you can reuse them for your own creative projects. The hardest part about using Trove, and this goes for any database, is hitting upon the right search terms to use. The trick is to think laterally when you formulate your search terms. These photos I've been showing you today are from Museums Victoria. The museum has marked them as public domain, which means that they are out of copyright, and you can download them using the little button on the right hand side that says reuse image. When you click on that, you can see some information on the left about how to attribute the image and options to download the image in small, medium or large formats. It's always good practice when you use an image to cite the creator where it's known and the name of the institution who has made it available for use. The other great thing about Trove is the hundreds of thousands of digitised newspaper articles that you can keyword search online. So this is where I found the newspaper article I showed you earlier that shows the plane being mounted on the steps of the library by the Royal Australian Navy. You can see it was published by the Herald on the 10th of December. 
The other great place to look for images is the State Library catalogue. Select pictures from the right, enter your search terms, and then press search. You can see when I did that search that 18 results came up. You can filter your results on the right hand side using the subcategories. For example, I've chosen to filter my results so it shows only the online images, that is, those that have been digitised so that we can preview them. And here you can see the image that I found that I used earlier of the statue wipers by photographer Mark Strizik. When you scroll down the page, once you've uh, opened up one of our images, you can see at the bottom there's some information about the copyright. If you click on this, it will tell you about how this item can be used and whether or not it's still in copyright. In the case of this photograph, the copyright is owned by State Library Victoria, so I was able to use it in my presentation. And the button here on the right with the down arrow will allow you to download the image. And that's it for today's question of the week. We'll see you next time.